Afternoon folks, Monday. We haven't done the roof yet, we're doing it tomorrow. I've just been down to get some polythene to make a pattern for there. So today I'm going to have a go at straightening this a bit more. See if we can just get it a bit better. But first I made a purchase over the weekend. Somebody shouted, it was Mike, my brother, shouted me up and said, have you seen all these Colchester student bits on Facebook Marketplace? So I said, no, I haven't. So I said, I'll have a look. So I did have a look, and the first thing I saw was a T-slotted top slide, which is something that I've been after for ages. Not only a T-slotted top slide, but a T-slotted top slide with a tool post in it. So, that is something. So now, I can fit a quick change tool post, should I want to, to my student. Obviously it's all to clean up, but there's also a parting off tool, which I can break dozens of. So, I've never had one of these before, so, there we go. I priced this, uh, I priced this up over the weekend on the internet. Like that, with the holder, 200 quid, which is a lot more than I paid for the whole lot. Nice uh, revolving centre with changeable tips. It's an oriental one, but still a nice one. Three jaw chuck with outside and inside jaws. A tail stock. A travelling steady. Which unfortunately will not fit mine because this, all this stuff is off a gap bed and mine is a straight bed, right? But that will fit. On For some strange reason, on the, uh, they put a different saddle on the gap bed. The saddle was a, a boring saddle, really boring saddle. Uh, it had T-slots in it and this fits in one of the T-slots. And first place, a truck key, whoops, just wrecked it now, a truck key, and some random jaws. I think that's probably a set. Uh, they look like they've been, that's a set of, I assume, machinable jaws that look like they've been machined for something or other. But there you go. Soon machine them again, provided the fist. That's are they numbered? Is that number two? No, doesn't look like it. Must have they must be numbered anyway. Very pleased, very cheap. I've been after one of these for ages. The last one of those I saw on eBay went for over 300 quid, I think. And then there's the uh, there's the top of the cross slide, of course, with a nut on it. Now whether the nut's any good or not, I don't know. And mine has a new nut on it anyway. Just a pity that the thread's not there. Oh, it's got a nut on it, look. Anyway. Mm, that looks fairly worn to me. But you never can tell. It does have the uh, jibs on it though. So there you go. So. That's it. On with, oh and uh, a boring bar, a fairly abused boring bar, but nonetheless, boring bar's a boring bar. I've probably got some tips for that. Right then, let's get this uh, recalcitrant little thread out and see if we can straighten it a bit more. I'll bring you back when I'm on with it. Bye now. Right folks. It's four o'clock and I still haven't got it set up. The idea is I want to set this independent of the cross slide so that I can find the position which is the most bent that way
which is there and then I can go back to there and then I can bring this out to press on there and watch the gauge and gradually improve it it all makes sense in theory but in practice it is very difficult to mount this anywhere where it's not going to get bunched by the cross slide moving across I think I'm going to have to maybe just put it down here if I can I might be able to do it because there's a, there's a, this mag base has a V on it on the underside so if I mount it if I mount it there I probably can I'll clean that up I'll have a go and I'll bring you back if it works well folks I've managed a very spindly setup using my mega large mag base I've managed to get into it I've given it one push with the cross slide which pushes it very easily and look at the difference there's only one possibility and that's that it's moved in the chuck it's actually just pushed the bar across but I'm going to have another go and just see if I can get it just a tiny bit straighter than that and then I'm going to move on to this bit and see if there's any bend in there as well but I must admit looking at that that looks a huge amount straighter but who knows right I'll carry on right I'm going to whip this out the lathe and try it because it seems to have done a great deal unless that's slipping in the chuck and it's not done anything at all but I'll tell you in a minute bye now right we're back in the chuck again I've put it in the chuck a lot tighter this time and I think it's working but I'm going to persevere and see if I can get it nearly spot on so I'll bring you back when I've got somewhere there we go folks look at that it's straight or at least it's to within five thou that's close enough. It's getting tight towards this end. Anyway, maybe do a bit more. I might, I might just give it another go. I might just try to see if this very end is bent. That might be it. I don't know. I don't know. But. It's made a huge improvement anyway. Huge improvement there. I mean, it was too tight to turn at all. You can turn that with your fingers now. I think also there's some in here. I think this is, this is, I think that and that are not parallel. But there is also another problem, which in this nice little envelope, I have some, just a minute, just a minute folks, in this nice little envelope is some little brass punchings which will drop down there and some leather punchings which will act as a spring because there isn't room there really to cut a spring. So what I found once again thanks to the auspices of Mr John Burke is the fact that I have a part missing. There should be a part, a washer, which goes on there and a spring which puts pressure that way on that. So, can you, did you see that? There should be a washer that goes into there and a spring in that recess which holds that that way. Right? And also tensions that that way. So, the next thing to do is to make up that washer. But that will be a job for tomorrow. Because it's now five o'clock and time to go home. So, we're getting there. Bit by bit, we're getting there. Right, and I'm going to have to have a close look at this washer. And uh, 
see what it's like. I have a feeling I know what it's like. The springs, no problem. I've got loads of springs. But as you can see from where that screw has lined up on there, there is. There is some play. And of course, you don't want any play on that like that. That wants to be absolutely... It doesn't want to bind, but there wants to be no backlash on it. Hmm. That is going to be a challenge. Although that is absolutely, that is absolutely flush with the turned shoulder on that shaft. It's absolutely flush with it, so I would think it's where it's supposed to be. Weird. Right, that's it folks. See you all tomorrow. Bye now. Afternoon folks, Tuesday afternoon. We were going to be roofing today but it's pouring with rain, so we're not. So, I've taken it out of the lathe, put it back in again, and it is yet better. I can almost turn it with my fingers now, except for one part where it's sticking, which I'm now going to see if I can mark up and relieve, or at least bend a bit more. But that idea is actually working quite well, uh, using the uh, cross slide to push against the lowest part of the uh, of the reading to uh, and, and watching the clock uh, as you push it back uh, it's straightened remarkably uh, remarkably well so i'm just going to continue right i'll bring you back when i've achieved something bye now right folks i'm just milling the damage off this and also putting a flat on it to just increase the uh, the distance between the end of the shaft and the spring. This will give me uh, sufficient space to put the nut on properly and probably put a little washer on as well which will not only look better but work far better. But I'm going to try it at that and uh, if that's not sufficient I'll mill a little bit off the other side. I was stuck for parallels, so I used a couple of pieces of ground tool steel. Uh, should I say ground high speed steel, uh, which has got me there. Right, off we go. And there we go, folks. That is not finished and it's not perfect, but it's mocked up and it's working. We can turn the uh, spring loaded micrometer thimble and we can also turn that freely. So it looks like we're about there with that. So next job is I'm going to try on the uh, I'm going to try on the cross slide and see what horrors that reveals. So off we go. And there we go. To say that's the first assembly, and uh, this is actually, this is damaged, I can't put that in, it's, uh, and I can't cut the sort any deeper because they all go in virtually at full length as you can see. But to say this is the first assembly, that is a remarkably smooth and play free assembly, even without oil. So I'm happy about that. So what I might do is work it backwards and forwards a few times, see if there's any high spots, and then I'm going to take the uh, jib strip out and I'm going to ease around all the holes because around all the holes there are marks where it's where the screws have damaged the jib. Uh, so I'm going to flat that both sides very gently on some some glass with some uh, some fine emery stuck to it, and uh, then we'll have a refit and an oil up, and uh, we've advanced the tech level. So there you go. Right, that's it for today folks. It's half past four, going on five o'clock, and it's time to pack up and go home. Mainly because I live there. See you all tomorrow. Bye now. Well folks, all the sawdust on the floor, 
and the remains of a sheet indicate that we've cut and fitted the roof repair and we've got the uh, all the edges sealed in with uh, adhesive but as you can see now the sun's gone down it's getting darker and we just haven't had time to to finish it so the the next job will be to put the felt on up there I couldn't film it for you because when I got the camera up to film it for you the battery was flat so there you go so that's it for this week there'll be another dad and daughter talk on Wednesday we'll record it on Monday thanks for watching thanks for subscribing two or three more subscribers this week send me a like send me a comment and it's goodbye from me and goodbye from him goodbye bye bye now